Anambra governorship election is not yet over as Professor Charles Soludo, Valentine Uzibo and Senator Andy Uban and others uh, get ready for supplementary elections in Ihiala local government area of the state today from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And also the former chairman of the defunct pensions reform task team, Abdul Rashid Mayna, has been convicted and sentenced to eight years in prison for laundering uh, about a 171 million naira. We're glad to have you join us on a beautiful Tuesday morning of the breakfast uh, right here on Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. Once again, thank you for joining us. And I am Osaogi Obama. Looking like it's uh, going to be a very, very interesting <laughs> Tuesday with the conversations that we have uh, for you this morning. Thanks for joining us and uh, we hope that you had a very beautiful night rest. Uh, welcome to a new day. For the people in Anambra State, the elections continue. It's not over yet. Uh, we would have expected that we would be talking about a new governor of Anambra by, you know, at least or at most yesterday morning, Monday. But uh, seeing the way things have played out, you know, the elections were scheduled for Saturday, eventually have continued all the way till uh, tomorrow, or today rather, where there's going to be another supplementary election. We hope that the elections today go uh, smoothly and peacefully without any other hitches that, you know, need uh, further elections. You know, I, I hope that we don't continue Anambra elections all the way to the end of November. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen. Just to elect one governor. I hope that it doesn't continue because there's, there's so much, you know, and it's, you know, it's getting tiring ha having to deal with all these. Of course. Um, and we spoke about this yesterday, you know, how um, um, it's embarrassing or disappointing that the whole of Ihiala local government area didn't have any election um, for an election that had been prepared for for, for the last four years. Um, we eventually got to uh, election day and you know, they still had these issues. So we hope, you know, we'll, of course, we'll be bringing you further details as the day goes by. And it's one of the things that we'll be talking about this morning also um, in our discussions on the program. But let's first of all start with our top trending stories. Abdul Rashid Mayna, you must know that name from the pension reform uh, tax team. Uh, he has been accused, or he was accused of, you know, um, of uh, stealing or, you know, misappropriating billions of Naira. Uh, yesterday, of course, the court in Abuja eventually sentenced him to eight years imprisonment um, for one of the charges. I think it's a, it's a combination of about, about, almost about 20 years that I meant to run concurrently. 21 years. Yes, that I meant to run concurrently. And, of course, some people have said this is, once again, another victory in the fight against corruption. Sadly, there's also those who have complained about how long this has taken because this court case has been running for years now. Uh, that there's a time when he also absconded and left the country and then he was rearrested someplace and brought back. His son also is um, also in custody um, and of course also faces charges. Uh, so we'll see how this uh, turns out. There's a little bit of drama yesterday with the DSS and the prison officials uh, arguing about who you know takes control or takes custody of Abdul Rashid Mayna after he was sentenced uh, to uh, eight years in prison. Well, for me, uh, I will definitely tell to those who are very concerned about how far this process has actually taken on. If you want to remember 2013, you say Abdul Rashid Maina, the issue of corruption uh, in the pension. He was dismissed at the time. Uh, fast forward 2015, and then he was declared wanted by the EFCC. And fast forward again to 2016. At some point, or thereabouts, 2016, 2019, or at some point, you also hear, oh, uh, he's been cleared of all the charges. And he actually asked for an apology from the National Assembly and the country, saying, oh, it was just uh, all of that drama. He yeah. was forced accused and in 2019 as well there were also stories saying that his posters were also out you know vying for governorship candidates and all of that and at some point also he was recalled back to the civil service i mean for me that has been very dramatic and you know the attorney general at, of the federation at the time confirmed that uh, yes he was back and uh, you know he was not all only back but he was promoted and then he was earning salaries so it is it's this one dramatic corruption case and let's not forget that prior to this time a lot of persons were really concerned because uh this current administration led by president muhammad buhari is is out for you know the fight against corruption and some persons thought that you know with the civil service in the drama it's really going to be very dramatic so it is one case that has actually you know been back and forth now let's even stay with the part that he was recalled back to service how do you recall someone who's been declared wanted by the efcc at some point he said he's been cleared so how do we explain all of that at this point in time now and to the fact that he started vying for 
whether he vied or maybe you had people pushing his interest. He, you know, it, it doesn't really make sense. So that's number one. And for me, you also have some other school of thought saying eight years after all that's been done, we're looking at, at approximately two billion naira. Yeah. And you want to juxtapose that with all of the pains that uh, those who are in the civil service have actually gone through. I mean, the suffering, the agony, the pain. And some persons would have probably lost their lives. Is eight years, you know, that judgment, enough. is it enough? Will this well, judgment actually help in the fight against corruption? Because this is some of the argument. Don't you think we're sending, you know, a signal um, out there to say, okay, it's okay, you just say you probably do eight years, which has already been counting according to it. So he's already done two years already, and then it probably has, you know, six years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I would agree. I would, you know, understand, you know, those sentiments, um, mostly because, but, but it's, it's very dependent on what the law says. You're not going to give a person, you know, 200 years if the law says, you know, that the person gets five years. But is it applicable to everyone? Well, no, that's the question. Because not. you you, fi you find not. some other persons who are not highly placed in the society yes. uh, given some kind of sentence. I yes. probably might not be able to mention specific, but, uh, you know, looking say, at no, the amount involved. It doesn't seem like it applies to everyone. Mm. Um, you know, but I would always say, and, you know, with these type of arguments, I would always say it depends on your, your the prosecution and your defense team. If you get a good defense team, you know, they somehow, somewhere able to get you, you know, favorable time, you know, best case scenarios. But there are other times when the, the, you know, the justice system actually does go ahead and give you a time that is very, very, very suitable for the crime that you've committed on. Um, and if the prosecution team is able to prove their case beyond reasonable doubt, because that's what uh, Justice Abang is saying here, that the EFC has been able to prove their case beyond reasonable doubt. Um, but I would agree, you know, with anyone whose sentiments say that they don't think that eight years would really be enough um, uh, time to be spent in jail for someone who stole, um, and, well, has been accused and found guilty of stealing billions of naira that were meant to be, you know, uh, money for pensions for, you know, for Nigerian um, workers. Um, she, he should refund it. Well, if, because is it, you I mean, the lot you still have. If you don't have, no, you have to refund it. That's that's it. I don't that sentence. I, I don't refunded. care. <laughs> you have to refund. But well, that's that's the idea behind jail. Because if you can refund it, then they may not need to send you to jail. No, you, know, you yes, have to refund it and do the crimes, time. But not every time, you know, that, you know, those funds are still available to, you know, for a person to refund. Um, and I have, I've never really agreed with the, the idea of a plea bargain because it came into, I think it was during Obasanjo's time, I believe, that the whole idea of plea bargain came into Nigeria's, you know, system where someone would be accused of stealing billions and billions of naira and buying properties across the country and across the world. And then when they are eventually caught, and, you know, during their court you know, case, then there's something about plea bargain where they give back some of the money that they stole, which a lot of times is really just a fraction of the money that they stole. They let go of some of the houses that they, have, they, they bought, you know, and eventually they walk. You know, we've seen a, a couple of those cases which were, which I felt were very, 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 very bad example of, you know, the fight against corruption. Um, I would also mention, you know, and I've said this before, that when we see cases like this, yes, Abdul Rashid Mena is the one uh, whose name has been called multiple times. But I think it's also important that, you know, we, we do not let our system fail us or we fix the system to a stage where we get to punish other people who were facilitators of this crime. Because exactly. he didn't walk into what any said. bank and gather all these funds and put them in his Ghana must go and run away. He didn't take two billion naira from any suitcase or from any vault. It is funds were, these crimes were facilitated by people in the civil service also that worked under him that worked in the same office with him, that signed off on certain payments, that signed off on certain transfers to certain bank accounts and, and, and on all that. And so he should not be the only one who's, who's you know, fingered here. Um, there's many, I believe there's a couple of other people who were also, you know, facilitators to this crime that should be um, arrested. And it's the same thing with governors, with deputy governors, with speakers, with House of Assembly members, whoever it is. When you hear that a governor misappropriated 7 billion naira, you know, in Abia State or, or, what so, or, or whatnot, he did not, you know, by himself walk into the <coughs> state coffers and pack all that money. It also brings us to, you know, another point that's been raised that um, he probably might just be taking the fall for a lot of persons. Uh, because, like you have mentioned, he, he wouldn't have actually acted, you know, all by himself. Now, another thing that stood out for me with that court judgment is the fact that, um, according to, you know, what the court, court actually held, uh, it's not possible, being a civil servant, it's not possible to have all of that, looking at his earnings, his salaries and everything all together. The, the, you know, all of these funds, 
found in the accounts, 300 billion, 1.5 billion and all of that. Um, you know, it's, it's not possible that he should end all of that. So it, I think that this is just one out of so many cases. There are a lot. I mean, there's a lot of corruption that's in going or ongoing in the civil uh, service. And, and yeah. I'm thinking that, you know, that we need to Absolutely. pay attention. But however, some people would say, it's, you know, better late than none or never. And it's better that we have a judgment than not have a judgment. Absolutely. Because I felt like, I feel like, and I also felt at some point that, you know, it's, it's, it's a hopeless situation because we're not heading anywhere. At some point, it was just in 2021 that, you know, we, the court actually had a nod to go ahead, you know, with this case. And finally, it's come it's to It's taken a lot of time, but eventually, you know, this is what he gets. Um, and, you know, like you said, you know, it's better that it comes late than it doesn't come at all. But some people would also argue justice delayed is, you know, you know justice denied. Um, we'll see how, you know, this also turns out, you know, and I, I personally don't think that this should also be recorded as a, a win in the fight against corruption. This is really just a court case, you know, that, you know, eventually found someone guilty. It's not a, a win in any way because corruption is still rife and it's still thriving and it's still excelling very well across Nigeria's, um, you know, uh, um, public space, you know, and it, it's everywhere that you can, you can smell it, you know, in every office that you can imagine. And so we've not really won the fight against corruption. Um, neither, you know, in my personal opinion, are we winning in any way. Um, this is just one case. Anyway, moving away from Abdul Rashid May, now we move over to uh, the uh, fight against um, insecurity where a sergeant in the army, his name Solomon Tosobo, has been arrested by the Nigerian um, Air Force or Army and, of course, um, is uh, been uh, charged with assisting with the, in, the, attacking, in the, the attack against the NDA that happened sometime uh, this year. I think it happened on the 24th of August. If you remember when the Nigerian Defense Academy was attacked in Kaduna, that led to the loss of uh, two military officers and the kidnap of one of them. Um, a sergeant in the Nigerian Air Force has been arrested and uh, been charged, you know, as being a party to that crime. Um, I think we have uh, clips. I don't know if we have clips of, uh, or pictures to quickly share with you um, of that person. Um, which, you know, for me, this is something that I am also, I'm, I'm happy about personally because um, of the, the fact that we've every now and then mentioned that the fight against insecurity um, also has to include the possibility that there are insiders and there are people who, who work in the Nigerian Army and the Nigerian Air Force that are insiders and, you know, um, you know give out information to these terrorists, um, assist these terror groups with arms and ammunition and, and whatnot. Yes, that's, uh, that's uh, the picture of him. His name is uh, Tosobo Solomon, Sergeant Tosobo Solomon. Um, and he has been, of course, uh, arrested over the NDA attack. Yeah, but, but you also have the fact that the uh, Air Force is also saying, yeah, we did not arrest the officer over, you know, the NDA attack. That's actually, you know, latest development. So it leaves us uh, at this point where we're wondering whose report should we believe. Yeah. Now, some concerns have also been raised. As much as one would say, yes, the, you can't really have all of this kind of attack happening without an insider uh, giving all of the information. So there, there would be some collaboration. Now, it, it's really, really worrisome. This is actually a force. Let's even assume that that's uh, something to go by. Okay, uh, isn't it you know really scary that those who should protect us and look out for us are the ones you know giving out the attack? It, I mean, but I feel like there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the entire system. We need to begin to look at the recruitment process and all of that. We don't just have to you know um, have everyone come in. We we have to have a process that would be able to screen. Thoroughly, I'm, yeah. I'm sure that we might not have, you know, a hundred percent. We're not expecting to have a hundred percent, you know, uh, process. But whatever. However, I meant to say, uh, it's important that we pay attention to the recruitment process and all of that. But if it's, this is something to go by, it's uh, really, really worrisome. And well, to also mention some of the concerns of Nigeria, they're saying yeah. you can't trust this government. Anything that comes out of... And, and so, how, where do we stand at this point in time when you say uh, you can't trust anything that comes out of this government's mouth? Because every time they say a thing, even if a policy is about to be implemented or a policy is being stated, people begin to question what government is about to do. So, but fingers across, we hope that uh, due uh, investigation will be done, proper well. investigation, so we get to the end of this. I would also mention that the Air Force has also, de you know, debunked the arrest, you know, so there's a little bit of controversy or confusion concerning this story um, over the um, arrest of this officer. The Nigerian Air Force has debunked, even if the papers carry it everywhere, uh, saying that uh, he has been arrested, Solomon Toso Tosobo, uh, Sergeant Solomon Tosobo, um, but of course, a quick update, you know, says that they are debunking, you know, the arrest of this officer. 
Um, so, you know, we hope that there is some clarification as to what exactly is going on over there um, with that, uh, with Solomon Tosobo. Um, if he truly has been arrested or it is the details concerning uh, the reason for his arrest, you know, that are a little bit controversial. Uh, but I guess we will we'll get to find out over time. Um, of course, uh, remember that we're having a very, you know, full plate this morning on our discussions. We're also going to be talking about uh, a little bit of crisis in Emo State, where the Speaker has been impeached um, by, of course, other members of the House. It says about six members of the House went ahead to impeach the Speaker. Um, and this is in reaction to an impeachment of the Deputy Speaker that happened sometime in July. It's, 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 a, it's a messy situation in the Emo State House of Assembly. It's one of the things that we'll be talking about this morning. But before we get there, Off the Press comes up next, where we have a quick review of the stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. And we'll be joined by our guest, uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, this morning on The Breakfast. Stay with us.